Hi, I'm James. And I'm Laurent. And today we're in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Hot Springs is a beautiful resort town in the middle of the Washita Mountains. And it's surrounded on all four sides by the Hot Springs National Park. And as the name indicates, Hot Springs is full of... Hot Springs! 47 to be precise. Every day they release a million gallons of water that rained more than 4,000 years ago, went deep into the center of the earth, and is springing back to the surface at a natural temperature of 143 degrees. And these hot springs led to the building of bathhouses during the boom of the spa movement at the beginning of the 20th century for the medicinal properties of the spring water that is charged with iron and calcium and magnesium. And hot springs grew further with spring training baseball, horse racing, and illegal gambling, and the city was flush with money until it all got shut down in 1967. The city went through a phase of decline, but is now coming back to its heyday with two million tourists visiting the city every year. There is so much history and architecture in hot springs, and we had a great time visiting. But hot spring has so much more with pristine nature, several beautiful lakes, and still horse racing and gambling, but legal this time. And in this video, we'll show you our top 10 favorite things to do in hot springs. So let's go. Number one on our list is Bathhouse Row. The hot springs and the bathhouses are the main reason why hot springs even exist. So it'd be a shame to come to Hot Springs and do all the touristy stuff you could do anywhere else, but not experience what is so unique about Hot Springs. The main street in Hot Springs is called Central Avenue. And on the east side of Central Avenue, there are eight bathhouses that are all aligned in a row. Although the springs have been around for thousands of years, most of the bathhouses we can see today were built in the 1910s and 1920s, when the spa movement became popular in the United States. But these bathhouses experienced a decline in the 60s and all but one stopped operating as bathhouses. But they have been progressively restored after being added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1974. Although several of them have now been turned into restaurants and stores, two of them are still operating as bathhouses. The Buckstaff and the Quapaw bathhouses. And we were able to visit the Quapaw and enjoy all the healing benefits from the thermal waters. As well as a nice massage. And there are four different pools at Quapaw and each one is at a different temperature. The other bathhouse you have to visit is the Fortis bathhouse, which has now been converted into the National Park Visitor Center. And it's also a museum that is absolutely free and shows you what these bathhouses used to look like in their heyday. You can see the old massage rooms, the beauty salon, the music room, and the men and women's locker rooms. But our favorite has to be the gymnasium with all the old wooden equipment. And this bathhouse still has tons of architectural details like mosaic tiles. And beautiful stained glass windows. And once you're done visiting Bathhouse Row, you can just cross the street to explore the Historic District, which is number two on our list. The west side of Central Avenue is full of stores. Some of them are just tourist shops with souvenirs you would find anywhere else, but there's also an incredible variety of quaint and interesting stores. Like an artisanal soap store, an olive oil and vinegar store, and art galleries. And also rock shops that sell Arkansas Crystal. And really important to us, Central Avenue was super dog friendly, and we were able to bring our dog to pretty much every store. Some of the most unique stores are the Mountain Valley store, where you can buy Hot Springs mineral water, and also visit the small museum about the history of the brand. And right next to that is the Bathhouse Row Winery. Who knew there was wine in Arkansas? <laughs> Some of the wines were too sweet for us, kind of like dessert wines, but the drier ones were actually very good. Aside from shopping, you should also stop by the Art Deco lobby of the historic Arlington Hotel and do the self-guided walking tour of all the murals. But the other thing you have to do on Central Avenue is visit the Gangster Museum. In its heyday, Hot Springs was kind of a mini Las Vegas, with speakeasies and illegal gambling, flushing the city with money. And Hot Springs was a vacation resort for all sorts of mobsters. Al Capone, of course, loved to visit Hot Springs, as well as families from the New York Mafia. The museum is really well done and shows all the connections between Hot Springs and organized crime. And number three on our list is the Garvin Woodland Gardens. It's a botanical garden on the shores of Lake Hamilton, just five miles south of downtown. The botanical garden now belongs to the University of Arkansas, but it's named after businesswoman Verna Cook Garvin, who owned the gardens until her death in 1993 and donated them to the university. It's a great place to visit on a sunny afternoon with miles and miles of walking trails in the woods. And like many things in Hot Springs, it's dog friendly, although our dog got pretty worked up by all the peacocks running around. Some of our favorite spots were the Japanese garden with the koi pond. 
And in general, there are lots of bridges and waterfalls throughout the gardens. If you walk all the way to the end of the gardens at the Perry Wildflower Overlook, you'll have a great view of Lake Hamilton. But if you visit the garden with kids, you have to stop by the treehouse. And we're not talking a couple of wooden planks in the branches. We're talking a massive treehouse that looks like it could be features in Architectural Digest. And suspended walkways overlooking the canopy. And of course, beautiful flowers throughout. We were there in the fall, which is probably not the best time for flowers. And we still saw hundreds of them. What a relaxing way to spend an afternoon. And right next to the gardens is the Anthony Chapel, number four on our list. It's an absolutely breathtaking experience. And the chapel is completely free to visit. It's a chapel that is built in the middle of the woods. And because the walls are made of huge windows, you really feel like you're in the middle of nature. The beams supporting the roof of the chapel are made to look like tree branches. It's amazing how the chapel itself merges with the nature around it. You really feel like God and his creation intertwined. It's such a peaceful experience. The chapel was built pretty recently in 2006. And it's modeled after the Thorn Crown Chapel, which is also located in Arkansas, but in the Ozarks, four hours north of Hot Springs. The Anthony Chapel is not an active church. It's mostly used as a wedding chapel. So you can visit it pretty much any time, and it's rarely crowded. But even when there are other visitors, everybody is always so quiet because it's such a serene building. The chapel wasn't designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, but it has a lot of the characteristics of a Frank Lloyd Wright building. It completely blends in with the land surrounding it, and it's such an immersive experience. And after you've been inside the chapel, you can walk along the trails in the middle of the woods. And also admire the Carillon Tower just outside of the chapel. And number five on our list is the Hot Springs National Park. A large portion of the city is a national park. And the national park is where you can see the hot springs themselves. There are 47 different natural springs on the slopes of Hot Springs Mountain. And when you walk on the trails, you run into all these springs. They release a million gallons every day. And the water is naturally 143 degrees Fahrenheit year round. 143 degrees is 40 degrees hotter than a hot tub. And it's hard to keep your hand in the water for more than a couple of seconds. And in the morning, you can see steam rising from the springs. It's so magical. The best place to experience the springs is to walk down the promenade. The promenade is a walking trail parallel to Central Avenue just behind Bathhouse Row. It's half a mile long and paved with bricks. And it's the easiest way to discover the hot springs while overlooking the city. And the park also has public fountains where people come from all over the region to fill up their jugs with spring water that is absolutely free. The mineral water is full of iron and calcium and magnesium. It's not just the H2O you get in the plastic bottle at the grocery store. The other thing you should do in the National Park is to go on top of the mountain and visit the mountain tower. The tower is 216 feet high, and from there you have a great 360 degree view of the Wachita Mountains and the forest that surrounds the city. And the tower has two levels you can visit. On top is the outdoor observation deck where you can take pictures of the landscape. And right below is the indoor level with a small museum covering the history of Hot Springs. And number six on our list is the Mid-America Science Museum. When we decided to go to Hot Springs, a science museum was not on top of the reason for our visit. But it turns out that the science museum is top-notch and well worth a visit, especially if you have kids. We know science sounds boring, but Mid-America was actually a lot of fun. There are three main things you should do at the museum. The first one is the Tesla Theater. It has the most powerful Tesla coil in the world, 1.5 million volts. It's a great show about the history of electricity, and the Tesla coil is really impressive. The second is the Dino Trek. It's a trail that goes through the woods outside the museum and displays many different types of dinosaurs. Kids are going to love it, and the recording of the noises that dinosaurs made make the whole thing even scarier. And at the end of the dino track, you also have the skywalk. Nothing to do with dinosaurs, but it was pretty cool to walk above the trees. And the third is the Digital Dome Theater, which is basically a planetarium with great visuals about planets, stars, and constellations. Even if you don't know much about astronomy, you can't help but being impressed by the footage. It was really well done. And outside of those three main attractions, there are lots of whimsical sculptures by an artist called Roland Emmett. And lots of fun experiments that make science a lot more interesting than any science classes at school. And mine too. And number seven on our list is Ron Coleman Mining. Many million years ago, Arkansas used to be under the ocean, and as a result, the soil is rich with many different minerals. Ron Coleman is a crystal mine. It's been in operation for five generations, and if you follow our channel, you know that we love family businesses. And there are three things you can do at Ron Coleman Mining. 
Number one is a tour of the mine, which includes driving down to the bottom of the pit in an old army truck, as well as seeing tons of incredible rocks. Some crystal from the mine itself, but also rocks and fossils from all over the world. And you can actually buy rocks by the pound, the way you would at a candy store. The second thing you can do is go mining for crystal yourself. We didn't think we would like it, but it was actually quite addictive. And you are allowed to keep all the crystals you find. Let's be clear, you're not mining in the operating open pit. You are only allowed to mine the tailing pile. Hopefully for them, they kept all the good stuff, and the tailing piles only have small pieces of crystal left in them. But we did find a few crystals, and at 60 bucks a pound, it hopefully paid for our tickets. And it was a lot of fun, for us and for the families that were there that day. And the third thing you can do is to ride the zip line. It's the only place in the world where you can zip line over an active mine. The zip line is a quarter of a mile long and goes right over the open pit. And in full disclosure, we did chicken out on the zip line. But if you're braver than us, it looked like a lot of fun. And number eight on our list are Lake Washita and Lake Hamilton. Thanks to a series of dams that were built from the 20s to the 50s, there are several large lakes around hot springs that provide all sorts of water sport options. Lake Hamilton is right in Hot Springs, approximately five miles from downtown. And it's a great place to rent boats and jet skis and kayaks. It's more than 11 square miles, so there's a lot to explore. However, you won't really be able to explore that by foot because Lake Hamilton has lots of waterfront properties and there aren't really any hiking trails where you can walk along the lake. If you want to do that, you'll have to go to Lake Washita. Lake Washita is approximately 25 minutes away from downtown, but it's a much bigger lake, roughly five times the size of Lake Hamilton. It's 36 miles long, but because there are lots of coves and islands, it has almost 700 miles of shore. Just like Lake Hamilton, you can boat and kayak, but you can also scuba dive because the water is so clear. And yes, you can swim in Lake Washita, and no, there are no alligators in the lake. And if you like hiking like we do, Lake Washita has tons of hiking trails. We saw deer by the bus load, and also turtles and birds of prey. And if you like nature, it's a great place to spend a day or two. And number nine on our list are the Northwood Trails. As we already mentioned, the city of Hot Springs is in the Wachita Mountains and in the middle of the Hot Springs National Park. As such, it's a great place if you like hiking in the outdoors. And the national park around the city has plenty of hiking trails with various levels of difficulty. But another great place to go hiking are the Northwood Trails. The Northwood Trails are just a quick five minute drive from downtown and they offer a great variety of terrain. Some of the trails are in the middle of pine trees and others are in the middle of leafy trees. Some of them are on flats and others have more elevation. As such, the Northwood Trails are the mecca of mountain biking in Hot Springs. And like everywhere else in Hot Springs, our dog had a great time in the Northwood Trails. What is great about the Northwood Trails is that there are three different lakes and some of the trails follow the lakes. And the landscapes were absolutely beautiful. We also saw several turtles that were sunbathing on snags. But the turtles were very skittish and usually jumped into the water before we had time to take our camera out. So you just have to take our word for it. And number 10 on our list is the Hot Springs Historic Baseball Trail. When you think of spring training nowadays, you think of the Grapefruit League in Florida and the Cactus League in Arizona. But it's Hot Springs that is the birthplace of spring training baseball. In 1886, the Chicago White Stockings, the ancestors of the Cubs, held spring training in Hot Springs and went on to have a successful season that year. And they credited the hot water for bringing their players back in shape after the winter, which attracted a lot of other teams to Hot Springs. And spring training lasted in Hot Springs until the 40s. And the number of Hall of Famers who came to Hot Springs is just astonishing. We're talking Babe Ruth, Joe DiMaggio, Cy Young, Hank Aaron, Mickey Mantle, Jackie Robinson, Yogi Berra. These are major, major players in the history of the game. The reason why we only put the baseball trade 10th on our list is because there is not much left to look at. Whittington Park is now a parking lot, and trees are growing where there used to be stands, and Majestic Field was completely redone in the early 2000s. And the baseball train is kind of a treasure hunt where you have to use your imagination to picture what used to be there. But the self-guided walking tours are really well done, with 26 plaques throughout the city that each have a QR code you can scan to hear the story. And the most noticeable one is the one about the 570 feet monster home run that a young Red Sox pitcher named Babe Ruth hit on St. Patrick's Day in 1918. At the time, Babe Ruth was just a pitcher, and that home run changed the history of baseball forever. The ball traveled so far that it landed in one of the ponds in the alligator farm across the street. And that's how Babe Ruth became a slugger, not just a pitcher. 
This video is about our top 10 things to do in hot springs based on what we enjoy doing when we travel. But there's so much to do in hot springs that different people will come up with a different list. For example, there is a big casino in hot springs called Oaklawn that also features horse racing from December to May. We're not really into gambling, so casinos aren't really our thing. But if you are, you should definitely pay a visit. Hot Springs also has a water park called Magic Springs. Here again, that's not really our thing, and we visited Hot Springs in the fall anyway. But if you like roller coasters and water parks, you should definitely pay a visit. And if you enjoy this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to watch our other videos, we're going to put one right here. And another one right there. Bye. Bye.